tonight on Walt Disney. Stop war shoot! Next on Walt Disney, two fierce desperados. Nobody's afraid of a stick. Two innocent orphans. They are not my kids. A sophisticated gentleman. Are you right? Are you crazy? A dangerous outlaw. We are the outlaw. They're the Apple Dumpling Gang. In their all-new adventure. Next on Walt Disney. I just spooked your horse. With any luck, you ought to catch up with him in a day or two. Ah, happy hunting, monk. Donovan! You won't get away with this! I'll find you and I'll collect that price on your head! I swear it! brought up young lady not too hard to look at would one that go traipsing off to st louis by herself out oh, go here let me finish that up. now you just sit uh, right down here uh, well okay but be careful she only throw it up go now you know perfectly well uncle hummer that I have saved my hard-earned money so I can finish my nurse's training at that women's college in St. Louis. Women's college? Didn't old Doc Parkins teach you all he knew about tending to the sick? There are a lot of things to be learned that Doc doesn't know about. Now, Uncle Homer, I appreciate everything you've done for me since Mom and Pa died, but I have to make my own way. What you ought to do is pick out some nice young fella and settle down and raise a flock of kids right here in Quake City. Where have I said that before? I am going to St. Louis. All done. Thank you for the shave, Millie. I've had worse. An old hole with women in college is not natural. If anybody wants me, I'll be playing poker over at the hotel. I'll make it easy for you fellas. Twenty. Yeah, you're bluffing. I'll see you. It's good enough for the mayor. It's good enough for me. I'm in. Yeah, I'll stay for twenty. What about you, Mr. Donovan? You got another one of your daddy's gold watches in your pocket? <laughs> no. But I got my lucky stick pen. Worth at least a hundred. 
I'll lend you 20, honey. It's a deal. I'm in. Billy? Yeah, I got a receipt for a valuable shipment coming in on tomorrow's stage. That's all I got. What makes it valuable? I want it from a gold miner. All right, gentlemen. Sorry, Bemmy. Yeah, sure. sure. It's just a piece of paper. Has to be as good as your lucky stick pin. You haven't won a hand all afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Billy, we'll play for it. I got two pair of kings high. You lose, Billy. Three ladies. Anybody beat that? Full house. I'm out. Looks like your luck just changed. Yes, sir. Good deal. Uh, take me a minute to count this up. Hmm. Did you ever see so much money in all your life? And it's just waiting for a pair of outlaws to come along and grab it. Like some outlaws to come along. <clears throat> We are the outlaws. Yeah, I forgot. Now, listen to me, Amos. I got a plan. I'll go out in the street and start a ruckus and draw all the people out of the hotel. Yeah. Then what? Then, when their backs is turned, you sneak in through the window and grab all that stuff off the table and run like the blazes. Run where? Behind the livery stand. I'm out there and we'll split the loot. Sounds pretty good to me, Cousin Theodore. Yeah, it's done near foolproof. <laughs> you know, some famous outlaw gang's gonna hear how we pull this off and ask us to join up. They're always looking for men with brains. Well, get going. Okay. Could you run through it just one more time? I'll go out in the street and start... Get going, you nit, you! Not that way, that way, you There's 20. And 30 for your daddy's gold watch. 30. Well, that leaves me with a stake for the rest of the game. And a piece of paper. Mr. Donovan? I don't believe you've met my niece, Billy. My pleasure. Stage is coming. Shipment on there for a uh, Billy uh, Keenan? Sure have. Just turn around. Mister, are you Billy Keenan? No. Do you know where I could possibly find him? No. Don't bother me. I'm looking for something. Excuse my brother. 
Now you heard him say something of value. <clears throat> Nothing on God's green earth more valuable than a healthy child. And you got two of them. Yeah, I don't want them. You take these kids back to their folks. Our folks are dead. Well, who's been looking after you? Different people. Some of them were mean. Who sent you here? An old widow woman. She had so many kids, she couldn't take care of two more. She knew Billy Keenan before he came west looking for gold. So she wrote him we were coming. That's swindle. What am I going to do with two kids? Well, you can start by feeding them. They look half starved. I don't have anything to do with them. There is not an orphanage in this town. Now, what do you expect them to do? Wander off among the bears and the timber wolves? Well, uh, no, no. The way I see it, you won these kids in a fair poker game, and I'm holding you responsible for their well-being. All clear for the westbound stage. Hey, 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 Stop. You don't want to go anywhere, son. Don't forget you're a happy family man. There it is. Kind of run down, isn't it? Well, it was abandoned by its original owner, a man who went looking for gold where there wasn't any. I like it. Me too. What's left of it? Charming. Uh, I think some bears broke in here looking for some food. I'm real good at dusting and cleaning. I, uh, I'll have Uncle Homer sitting over a couple men to help fix it up. There are holes in the roof. Look out! Uh, somebody left the trap door open. Wow! A gold mine right under our cabin! Oh, I'm afraid that's just an old root cellar. Probably nothing down there but potatoes. Yeah, we better keep this closed. I know, honey. I've got some food and blankets out there in the buggy. Oh, I'll go get them. Um, I guess the kids are going to be needing some more clothes. I'll, I'll see what I can round up and bring them the next time I come around. Millie? Millie? You know, I keep asking myself, why wouldn't a warm, sensitive, caring young woman like you want to raise these two motherless babes herself. Oh, that, that's just out of the question. Hmm? I'm leaving in a few days on the eastbound stage for St. Louis to attend a woman's college. Which reminds me that those motherless babes are also fatherless. And as far as I am concerned, they will stay fatherless. They came to town looking for somebody else. You, sir, are both selfish and heartless. Now, that doesn't add up to much, does it? I never claimed to be anything but a gambler. Well, you'd better start looking for a decent job so you can take care of your kids. They're not my kids! Don't you yell at me! Why don't you just admit that you're happy that I'm stuck with them and you're not? Oh. Good night. Mr. Donovan, why don't you like us? I like you. Hmm? Well, it, it's nothing personal. I, I feel the same way about any kids. Um, good night. Thanks for taking us in. Now, it, it's only... A temporary arrangement. Now, you understand that, don't you? Yeah. Well, you, you, you go 
Firstly, Celia, I'm tired of being shuttled around from one place to another. Me too. I like this place. Mr. Donovan is a whole lot nicer than he pretends to be. I can tell. All we have to do is convince him to let us stay here. We can do it, Clovis. Of course, it'd be a lot easier if he was married. I guess we'd better work on that, too. Good night. Good night. Morning, boys. Uh, you gonna let us out now, Sheriff? I'm looking for a couple of volunteers to do some repair work on a cabin. You think you can handle that? Oh, me and Cousin Amos here, we're experienced carpenters. Fixing a cabin be child's play for us. Yeah. Well, just see that you boys stay out of trouble. There's a wagon waiting out back for us. Yeah? I wonder if we could have our guns back. I feel sort of naked without mine. No, nope, that's one thing I'm not going to do until you both prove you're decent law-abiding citizens. Well, how are we going to do that? By proving that you're useful. Now, you take these tools and get to work. Wait a minute. Nails. You both got to have nails. The big roof. See that you do a good job. There's a rash for you. Get going. Is that the right way, Mr. Theodore? <laughs> so dull it won't even cut butter this hammer is no good neither keeps missing the nail well how can expert carpenters like you work with bad tools well, it's a funny thing that thought just crossed my mind mine too i think expect a pair of famous outlaws to be able to do everything. Outlaw? Why did you go and tell her that? Just flipped out. Are you real, honest-to-goodness outlaws? Well, yeah. Now that the cat's out of the bag, me and my second cousin Amos here are a couple of dangerous characters. You're not just joshing us. Cross my heart and hope to kiss the pig. Now, you don't tell nobody. Oh, we won't tell anybody. We don't want people to know. Not until after we join the famous outlaw gang. Why do you tell our business to everybody? Don't worry, our lips are sealed. Yeah, we're not cattle tails. Hey, Celia, could you bring up those boards, please? I need them right away. Coming up. Yeah, go help him. She's a good little helper, that girl. Yeah. Careful on that ladder. Celia, Clovis, you get down from there right now before you hurt yourself, and, and please be careful. Yes, ma'am. We don't have to listen to what Miss Millie says. She's not our mama. Not yet, but if we work it right, she will be. And lives, Mr. Donovan. 
Do I hear a raise, Eli? Yeah, I think you're bluffing. I'm not gonna let you off easy. Mr. Donovan! I would like to know how you can stand to live with yourself. Don't you have any conscience? Don't you ever feel shame? For what? For letting those children risk life and limb repairing that cabin while you, a grown man, sit here playing your childish game. Poor Aces, forget that race. Do you, do you know what you are, Mr. Donovan? A buzzard living off the misfortunes of others. Oh, hey! Hey! Do you, do, you, do you know what you just did in there? You just cost me $50, maybe more. That's all you care about, isn't it? Lady, I am a gambler. That's my profession. How else do you expect me to put food on the table for those two kids? You are so wrapped up in yourself. I don't think you've given them a second thought. I found Clovis up on the roof and Celia scampering up a ladder. I didn't tell him to do that. Well, you weren't there to stop. I was off doing my job. When are you going to get that through your head? And I did not spend all day at the poker table. I wasted a lot of it talking to folks with families. And you know what? None of them need two more mouths to feed. So don't tell me I didn't give those kids a thought. I hardly had time to think about anything else. How do you expect me to work with all this yammering going on? Uncle Homer, would you please tell Mr. Donovan that I don't want to hear another word he has to say? Your niece is being contrary. I find that hard to believe. She has made up her mind about me, and she does not want to be confused by the facts. I am willing to listen to anything reasonable. If you want to present your case, son, I suggest the proper place for it is the the dining room of the Quake City Hotel. They serve a beefsteak dinner that's not too tough to chew if you have your own teeth. Uncle Homer, I am sure that Mr. Donovan has no intention of asking me to dinner. Well, that just shows you how wrong you are, because that is exactly what I was going to do. Go, oh, dinner's at 6.30. She'll be there. Now, vamoose, both of you. And let me finish my work. Delicious. Apple dumplings is my favorite food. Millie, are you sure you wouldn't like some dessert? Oh, no, thank you. You have such a lovely smile. You should do that more often. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about the way I carried on this afternoon. Well, I accept your apology, but it isn't necessary. I understand. You do? Mm-hmm. Oh, Uncle Homer has never understood me. I don't quite know what to make of you. Do you like him? <sighs> Celia, that's not a question you should ask a young woman. Do you like her? We well, wouldn't have asked her to eat dinner with us if we didn't. Well, she wouldn't have come if she didn't like him. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Under the mouths of babes. <laughs> it, is something wrong? Excuse me, I just need, I just need some, need some air. Does he do this often? Oh, no, ma'am. I expect having you so close by made him nervy all of a sudden. He sure does admire you something fierce. He does? Oh, yes, ma'am. He talks about you all the time. Uh. Oh, I was looking for my gun. It, it fell on the hay in there, and uh, I found it. <laughs> Lucky it wasn't a needle. <laughs> needle. <laughs> Why did you run off? 
Why didn't you wait for us? Was that your way of getting out of paying the check? Uh, no. Uh, no, you see, I suddenly remembered some important business that I had to take care of. Out of town? Look, Millie, a, a man came in there. Somebody that I did not want to see. I've got to go. First, we'll put the kids to bed, then we'll talk. going away, are you? I have to. Why? Well, uh, it's, it's a long story. I'm not sure you'd understand it. What are we going to do without you? I don't know. I don't know, honey. But Millie will think of something. They'll send us someplace else. That's what they always do. I wish there was something I could do to help you. But I can't. Good night. Goodbye. The problem was that he was a sore loser, and he accused me of cheating. Well, his word carried weight, and I had to outrun a lynch mob. But that wasn't the end of it. He put a price on my head of $5,000, dead or alive. And a bounty hunter named Monk Hartwick has been dogging my trail ever since. And that was the man you saw tonight? Yeah. An old monk is known for not bringing his prisoners back alive. And I know that he's in the hotel right now, cleaning the six shooters that he carries around in that carpet bag. And tomorrow morning, he's going to come looking for me. And that's why I got to get out of here tonight. Paul, haven't you ever thought of staying and seeing it through? Not a gunfighter, man. And with a price on my head, the law is on his side. I wouldn't stand a chance. So, this is a goodbye. Sheriff will give us our guns back. <clears throat> Theodore, oh. damn it! Don't you kids know better than to jump out behind a, a, a behind an outlaw like that? You scared us half to death. Huh. We know where you can get some guns. Huh? There's a stranger at the hotel. He's got a whole carpet bag just full of guns. All you have to do is break into his room and then get the bag. <sighs> we'll help you. 
couple of famous outlaws like us teaming up with a couple of kids, what would people say? You wouldn't have to use your real name. We just think up something to call the game. How about the Apple Dumpling Gang? I like it. Son, uh, you'd better let me have that chunk of rock before you're tempted to use it. Oh. I'm sorry I couldn't think of any other way to keep you here. You could have broken every bone in my body. It was a chance I had to take. Where are the kids? I looked everywhere for them, but I couldn't find them. They'll turn up. Right now we got things to do. Millie told me the whole story, and as the Justice of the Beast, I think maybe we got a legal solution to your problems. You pinching my head. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my nerves You're going to step all over me. I'll, I'll wait till I get... They're climbing in the window. Amos, you come back here. You're in the room now. Let go of the rope. Why don't we just bust through the door? Why don't you use your head? He'd notice that right off. This way, if the kids give a signal, we can make our escape through the window before he comes through the door. How'd you get so smart, Theodore? Well, some people are born just good looking. Now, help me find that carpet bag. I hope those kids knew what they're talking about. I don't see any place where that thing could be hid. Does it look anything like this? Yeah, it'd be about that size. Which find that? It was under the bed. Get him! Oh, wait! Those kids was right as rain. Look at these. Ain't they beautiful? I think this is still a little too heavy. Let's trade again. Oh, 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 oh. Let me out. I'm, I'm the old fucking. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Don't let me out. 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 Justice of the Peace. 
You draw your iron in here, it'll be the last draw you ever make. I'd like you to meet my special deputies, starting with Leonard Sharp, mayor of this town. Ready? I'm taking Russell Donovan back to the Arizona Territory to collect the price on his head. Are you absolutely certain that the man sitting here in this barber chair is Russell Donovan? Dead, sir. You're in luck, because the town of Quake City also has a price on his head, and you are legally entitled to collect it for handing him over. Oh, that's good. I'll just take it. Then you, as bounty hunter of records, are placing the wanted man in my custody? That's right, till I get my reward. Let's speed things along and have the hearing in the presence of these assembled witnesses. Hear ye, hear ye! The Common Court of Quake City is now in session. Homer McCoy, Justice of the Peace, presiding. What is all this? All you got to do is hand me that reward money. That's it. That's the first item on the docket. Here is the price we put on Dunneman's head. <laughs> well, that's 50 cents. I don't like jokes. I'm taking him back. Try it, and I'll find you $5,000 for contempt of court, and you won't make a plug nickel on the deal. It's my judgment that Donovan, being the sole support of two orphan kids, remain in the custody of Quake City so he can continue to provide for them other claims against him to the contrary, notwithstanding. Court adjourned. <laughs> The game ain't over, gambler. I'm holding the aces. Come on! Uncle Howard, you do this! I'm glad he's a bounty hunter and not a lawyer. Well, you sure put one over on him with all that... All that gibberish about me having to remain in the custody of Quake City. <laughs> oh, that part wasn't gibberish, son. That was legal. Help! Mr. Donovan! Mr. Donovan! Chloe, what's the matter? It's the bounty hunter. He's got Celia. What's that? The bounty hunter killed Amos and Theodore. He had me and Celia tied up over at the livery stable. He just came and cut me loose. He's going to take Celia with him unless you go with him and take her place. Oh, no. We'll show Hardwick we don't stand for that in Quake City. Yeah, that's that's what what we our head. If we rush him, that little girl could get hurt. He said Donovan should go alone. But the man's a killer. That's all the more reason for taking it easy. We don't want lead flying in either direction. He said Donovan should go around in back of the livery stable and walk straight up to it with nobody else. Okay, all right. That's what he wants me to do. Well, you're not going to go out there and face him alone. Who, me? I have to be crazy. You gave me a start, son. I thought you were getting ready to play a hero. I wouldn't know how. But there may be a way to trick him into letting the girl go. If you need us, you holler. You better. You we'll better. all be right in here. I want to go right, back inside. Well, it won't be long now that Donovan's as big a fool as I think he is.
Monk, I'm here. Step back so I can see where you are. First, release the girl. Ah. I'll trade when I got something to trade for. The sound of your voice ain't here. Now show me where you are. Send it out, Monk. If you want me, that's the only way you're gonna get me. You don't need her anymore. She served her purpose. I'm worth five thousand dollars to you now. All you gotta do, turn her loose. What do you say, Monk? Come on, quick. Come on, come on. Oh, everything's going to be all right. He's going to shoot you. Oh, no, no. Now, Millie's at the barber shop with Clovis. I want you to go to her. I'm scared. I don't want to stay with you. Oh, Donovan! Now, you do as you're told. You get out of here. Now, go. Run. Run fast. Staying ahead of us. Donovan! You've been carrying that darn thing all this time. I thought we ought to get something for riding in that darn wagon. Well, get rid of it. I don't want to see another watermelon the rest of my life. Hey, give me that. I'll take those, son. Homer. Didn't you hear me holler? I'm here, ain't I? You'll get these back. When you're clear out of town, but don't let me see you around again, or I'll run you in as a public nuisance. I'd think twice before I left this town if I was you, Donovan. I'm gonna be looking for you. All right, boys, escort him to his horse and see him on his way. Let's go. Uh, are you fellas all right? Oh, I'm hit. I'm hit. Oh. That's watermelon! Mr. Donovan! I didn't know nobody could kill Mr. Donovan! Right. He's not the luckiest guy in the whole world! I'm almost beginning to believe that. So <laughs> am I. <laughs> Don't suppose there's anything I can say to make you change your mind. No. But I'm gonna make you proud of me one day yet, Uncle Homer. Shucks, I'm proud of you now. These are for you. Oh, thank you, Clovis. Thank you, Celia. We wish you weren't going away. We hope you and Mr. Donovan would get married. Uh, where'd you ever get an idea like that? I hope we could live together like a real family. Could you stay, Miss Millie, please? No, silly. I'm afraid it wouldn't work out that way. But I'll come back one day soon, I promise. Just, oh, come here, Clovis. Oh, I'll miss you two so much. Oh. Oh. Bye. 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 Well, I hate to see you go, just as I was getting to know you. Passengers for the eastbound stage, climb aboard. You know, I'm I'm tempted to get on this thing and go to St. Louis with you. Well, if you feel that way, why don't you? <laughs> Good 
much as I'd like to. I just can't go. Because you know it isn't fair to the children. And I love you for that. Hurry up. We gotta get going. She might be back sooner than she thinks. Why, what do you mean? Remember that chunk of rock you carried out of the root cellar? I had it assayed. It was almost 60% gold. Gold in my root cellar? The town's root cellar. When word gets out, folks will come flocking back and the boom will be on again and maybe we'll need a hospital and hospitals need... Nurses. So, you just better start digging out that gold, son. We figure on letting you keep maybe 10% of it so that you can raise those two little tykes. Just, just a minute. I am not a miner. I'm a gambler. You might have hit the mother load, son. And 10% of El Dorado is a heck of a sight better than 100% of nothing. <laughs> uh, we got to get our hands on that gold. Why don't we just dig for it? We can't do that, because we're outlaws. Did Mr. Donovan really say that? Yes, ma'am. He also said you were the most beautiful woman in the whole town, and he admires you greatly. What else did he say? He said his heart just goes out to that poor widow, Honeywell, and he wondered how you feel about getting married and raising a couple of kids. Well, I could never marry a gambler. Oh, he'd be willing to give up gambling oh. for the right woman. Clovis, Celia. I gotta go. Think about it. Hey. Hey. I tell you what. I happen to have a couple of dollars left. What do you say we go in the hotel and shoot the works on some apple dumplings? Yeah! Ah, okay, here we go. So. What have you kids been up to today? Anything I should know about? Not much. Huh. 